Hey guys, it's Rose and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another video. Today I want to give you guys some tips on going vegan and eating a plant-based diet. This video is going to be mainly focused around how I structure my meals, what really works well for me in terms of planning my plant-based meals, and just hopefully give you some practical tips on how to eat plant-based. Today's video is also sponsored by Care Of, so I'll be talking about them a little bit more later on in this video, but basically today I want to give you some good practical advice from somebody that's been vegan now for about six and a half years and also been playing with plant-based lifestyle for I think nine years or something like that. I think I'm pretty good at it at this point. It's like second nature. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a doctor. So don't take this as like professional advice. But yeah, I think I have some, you know, good guidelines that I follow to share with you guys. I also want to show you guys three different beginner-friendly vegan recipes that are delicious and really easy and very easy to find the ingredients. And also these meals are a good example of how I would kind of balance out and structure my meals that make me feel really satisfied and good on a plant-based diet. So let's get started. So my first tip would be to eat a predominantly whole foods plant-based diet, but not be super, super strict with it. So if you guys don't know, a whole food is basically a food that has not gone through any sort of processing or breaking down. So basically things like vegetables and fruit, things like brown rice, quinoa, beans, these are all examples of whole foods that are plant-based. So what people recommend is that you wanna eat the majority of your diet in a whole foods plant-based form. So you want to kind of stay away as much as possible from super processed foods because those tend to lose a lot of nutritional value as you process them further. However, I don't follow this like to the T as in I'm not like super strict on making sure everything is like a whole food. There are definitely different levels of being processed. So tofu is technically a processed food, but it's not like the same as having, you know, a fake meat burger, for example. So there are different levels of being processed. Obviously, certain foods are more processed than others, and I think it's okay to add in some processed food, especially out of convenience. There is something to say about having convenience, okay? Because that's one thing that a lot of vegans struggle with is, you know, not having those convenient options available like everybody else does. So I think you can add in some processed food, whether it's a little bit unhealthy or not, but I think trying to predominantly eat a whole foods plant-based diet is the idea. So for example, if I'm going to eat like a veggie burger that I bought at the store, that's going to be a pretty processed meal, but I try to add in like a big side of vegetables or something like that in order to make my meal a little bit more um, healthy, I guess, and get a variety of different plant foods. So I would just play around with eating mostly whole foods plant-based, but adding in a little bit of processed food is completely okay in my opinion, and it helps make this whole process a lot easier because I know it's hard to always cook everything from scratch. It's a lot of work and a lot of effort and it's okay if you don't always eat everything whole food. So that's my perspective. My second tip would be getting a regular blood test. So maybe I would go as far as, you know, doing a blood test before you start your plant-based journey, just so you have an idea of like where you're at before you start. Maybe you're already missing some things. Maybe you're getting not enough of certain nutrients. Who knows? So I think it'd be a good idea to, you know, just get an idea of what your situation is like before you go vegan. So then you can like better plan your meals ahead. Now, don't overthink it. I honestly, I am terrible with the blood tests. I know that I should practice what I preach, but the last time I did a blood test, um, I think I did it last year, but that was like the first time in like five years maybe that I did a blood test. I know, it's so bad. Uh, maybe even longer, oh my God. Yeah, actually it was probably longer. Either way, do as I say, not as I do, my friends, okay? So yeah, I would maybe get a blood test before going plant-based and then maybe a year later, maybe half a year later, depending on, I guess, if you get free blood tests or not, depending on where you are, um, maybe get another blood test a year later just to see where you're at and see if you need to, you know, switch things up a little bit and add a little more of something. So it's always a good idea whether or not you're vegan, but since people are so concerned about a vegan diet being deficient, it's probably a good idea to just to make sure that you're doing all right, okay? And that brings me to my next point, which is take your vitamins. Take your supplements, take your vitamins. There is no shame in taking your vitamins, my friends. I feel like vegans get shamed randomly for taking vitamins, it's like, you know, a lot of people need to take vitamins. It's not just vegans, okay? So one thing that you should absolutely be taking on a plant-based diet, vitamin B12. Okay, you have to be taking vitamin B12 as a vegan. Just take it, don't worry, you'll be fine. 
fantastic. And that brings me to the sponsor of today's video, which is Care Of. So Care Of, you guys, is a vitamins and supplements company, and what's amazing about them is that they literally just ship your month worth of vitamins straight to your door so you don't have to worry about a thing. So they give you this lovely box once a month, and that is filled with basically your daily needs in terms of vitamins. So what you do is you go online and you do a five minute quiz and it asks you about your lifestyle, your diet, and your you know goals, what you're looking for in terms of your health and fitness. And then it gives you recommendations on what they think you should be taking in order to support your lifestyle. And then you can pick and choose whichever vitamins and supplements you want to add into your little box. So it comes in this lovely box. It basically has your month supply of vitamins in here. And then all you have to do is just take out one of these and take this and there you go. Those are your vitamins and supplements for your day. And it just kind of alleviates that stress of like, oh my God, do I have to take, what do I have to take? Like, you know, you don't have to think about it. You can just take one of these little packets every day. In my personal daily pack, I've got some vitamin B12, veggie omega, which is loaded with EPA and DHA, magnesium, which supports muscle function and healthy bones, cranberry, which is great for urinary tract health, and a probiotic blend for a healthy gut and digestive system. I feel like during this time of year, it's the holidays. I know the holidays are looking a little different this year, but I think during this time, especially because it's so stressful right now, I think it's really important for us to try to take care of our health, both mental and physical health. And I feel like having a routine, a daily routine of taking your vitamins every day can not only make a difference physically, but also mentally as well. So yeah, Care Of is awesome. And oh, another great thing is that these little packages are compostable as well. And you can find the very easy instructions on their website on how to compost these. So you guys, make sure you take the quiz that's linked down below. It's only five minutes and it can give you some recommendations on what vitamins and supplements that you might want to consider taking. And if you guys are interested, you can get 50% off your first order using the code VEGAN50. So once again, all of the information will be down below and thank you so much to Care Of for sponsoring today's video and don't forget to take your vitamins, my friends. So my next tip would be to try and find a way to balance your meals properly. So one thing I had to learn when I went vegan and plant-based was how to eat in a way that made me feel satisfied and good and also meet my nutritional requirements. And I think this looks a little bit different depending on the person and the lifestyle and you know what kind of physical activity you do and how physically active you are and what your goals are. I mean, obviously kind of the way that you balance out your meals might look a little bit different, but I want to give you guys the rundown of what I do that makes me feel really good and that makes me feel satisfied. And I I've tried the whole like high carb, low fat. I've tried the low carb thing. That was mainly just an experiment because I don't wanna live without carbs. But anyways, so yeah, to me what works the best is having a balance of carb and a protein and vegetables in the meal with a small amount of healthy fats. That's what works really well for me. So when I say, oh, by the way, when I say like a carb, or a protein. I am aware that most foods have a combination of all three macronutrients. If you guys don't know, the macronutrients are carbs, protein, and fat. And most foods are a combination of all three. But when I say carb, I mean something that is predominantly carbs. And when I say protein, I'm saying something that is higher in protein than other food products. And obviously when I say fat, again, something that's higher in fat. So basically what I try to do is I balance my meal by adding in some sort of a carb or some sort of a grain, for example, something like brown rice or even white rice sometimes, okay? Bread, uh, pasta, noodles, some sort of something high in carbs. And then another thing I like to add into my meals always is a protein. So again, something that's higher in protein. So for example, tofu, tempeh, beans, lentils, any sort of legumes, uh, those are high in protein. So that is crucial for me. So the carb and the protein, absolute must. And then of course, in order to get my vitamins and minerals and goodness, I try to add in some vegetables as well. For me, the I don't need to add like so much fat into my diet for me to feel satisfied, uh, but I should pay a little bit more attention, I think just for my own health to add a little bit more healthy fats into my diet. So examples of healthy fats would be like nuts, seeds, uh, avocados, things like that. I heard pumpkin seeds are really good for you. I heard uh, flax seeds are really good. Chia seeds are really good. These are really good sources of fat. So you can add them into your meal or you can have, add them as like a snack in between. So yeah, these are some things to be mindful of. So you just kind of try to figure out what works for you, but that's kind of like the way that I balance my meals. So now let me show you guys some examples of how I would create some balanced meals. I have three recipes for you guys, super easy, super simple. I do have a blog post linked down below if you guys need to get the recipes for any of these, the written recipes. But yeah, here, here's how you make 
some three simple beginner-friendly plant-based meals. First recipe I'm gonna show you guys is a lazy version of bibimbap. I'm gonna call this the lazy one pan bibimbap. So bibimbap is a Korean dish and the literal translation is mixed rice. So it's basically rice with lots of different other ingredients, usually lots of vegetables, and you mix everything with a spicy sauce. So first I'm actually chopping up some extra firm tofu and I cooked it up slightly on a nonstick pan. So as you can see, I chopped them up into small pieces and I'm just pan frying it for just a few minutes until it starts to become nicely golden on each side. It doesn't have to be perfect and all you have to do is just season with a little bit of salt. And once that's done, you can just remove from the pan and let's chop some veg. And for vegetables, I'm just using whatever I have on hand, you guys. You can do the same. So I'm just chopping up some zucchini and I'm just dicing it up small so that it's easy to pan fry. I'm kind of treating this like a cross between bibimbap and fried rice. So that's my mindset. So I have zucchini and I also have some enoki mushrooms, which I've chopped up. And I also have some kale as well, which I'm also chopping up. So in that same pan that we cooked the tofu, now we're gonna add the enoki mushrooms and the zucchini. And we're just gonna cook that up for just like one or two minutes and then add in the kale as well. And I'm just gonna season with a little bit of soy sauce. And then let's add in our rice. I'm just adding in already cooked rice. And then we're gonna add in, of course, the key ingredient, which is gochujang. This is a spicy Korean red pepper paste. I use this in everything. And you can find this in the Asian section of your grocery store or maybe in your Asian grocery store. And then we're also gonna add another key ingredient, which is sesame oil. So that's gonna add some really great flavors in. And then we can toss the uh, tofu back in and then just mix it, guys. Mix it really, really well. And once that's done, you can simply just plate it and serve. I decided to also add in a little bit of avocados to basically top up this balanced meal. So as you guys can see, we've got the grain, which is the brown rice. We've got the protein, which is the tofu. We've got our vegetables and our healthy fat, which is our avocado. Next, we are making a super lazy meal. We're making stir-fried ramen. So I'm taking this ramen here, which is basically just the ramen noodles. It's like gluten-free. It's like, I think, slightly healthy ramen noodles. So I'm gonna cook that up according to instructions. And at the same time as I'm cooking up the ramen, I'm just throwing in some frozen mixed vegetables into that same water. And then I'm also going to open up a can of beans and just rinse it. And I like to just keep the beans in a container in the fridge so I can eat it throughout the week with different meals. And once the ramen is cooked, according to instructions, you can drain the water. And then I just took it back to the stove and I just threw in some soy sauce and a lot of sriracha and a little bit of agave or maple syrup for sweetener. And then I'm also going to throw in some of those chickpeas as well. And at the very end here, of course, I gotta throw in a little bit of sesame oil, toasted sesame oil, which is seriously essential to like everything. And then we just mix everything together. And of course you can adjust the flavors and add whatever else you wanna add. This is just a super simple, lazy dish. And then of course I'm topping with some green onions and some toasted sesame seeds. So here we have the carbs from the ramen, the protein from the chickpeas, the veggies from the frozen veggies, and healthy fats, I guess, from the sesame seeds. And I guess the sesame oil is a fat, maybe not so healthy, who knows? <laughs> Next meal is going to be a simple peanut noodle bowl. I'm using spaghetti just because I didn't have any other noodles, but I would recommend using buckwheat noodles or maybe rice noodles, I think would be fantastic, but any kind of noodles will do the trick. So I'm chopping up some vegetables. Again, I'm just using whatever I have, but here I have some broccoli, some cherry tomatoes, some cucumber, and some cilantro. Cilantro, I highly recommend if you like it. Oh my God, it goes so, so well with this. So now I'm gonna mix together the sauce ingredients. So for the sauce, you're gonna need one and a half tablespoons of nut butter. I'm just using peanut butter. We also have one tablespoon of rice vinegar or apple cider vinegar, one tablespoon of soy sauce, half a tablespoon or one tablespoon of agave nectar or maple syrup, a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger, half teaspoon of garlic powder, and mix everything together. So around two minutes before the noodles are finished cooking, I like to throw in the broccoli so I can cook the broccoli a little bit. And I also like to throw in some edamame beans. 
I always like to keep some frozen edamame beans in my freezer so I can throw them into different dishes. And once the noodles are done cooking, you can actually drain it and then rinse it in cold water. And then we're gonna throw the noodles and bean mixture into a bowl and just basically throw everything in along with the sauce and mix it very well. And of course you can eat it straight out of the bowl or if you're like me and you have to take pictures then you can put it into a slightly nicer plate. <laughs> and then I kind of topped it, I actually topped it with the cherry tomatoes at the end here as you can see just for the aesthetics. And then of course you can top with some uh, sesame seeds as well. And of course you also have to have some green onions on top, of course. And there you have it, we have our healthy carbs from our whole wheat pasta or buckwheat noodles if that's what you used. We also have of course our vegetables, we have our healthy fats coming from the peanut dressing and the protein from the edamame beans. And now let's go back to our tips. So my next step would be to try to understand caloric density. So caloric density, let's see what it is defined as because I don't know if I can explain it properly. Caloric density is a measure of calorie content of food relative to its weight or volume. So basically, if something is calorie dense, that means it is very high in calories compared to the weight or the volume. So some plant foods that are calorie dense would be avocados, nuts, and seeds. Usually things that are higher in fat tend to be calorically dense and usually a lot of heavily processed foods, junk foods, things like that tend to be calorically dense. Obviously it depends on the food, but uh, yeah, so calorically dense foods tend to be things that are small or you know don't weigh much, but very high in calories. So a lot of people might look at a big plate of food and just automatically assume because it's a large amount of food in terms of volume that, oh my God, that is like a lot of food, that's a lot of calories. That is not the case. You could have a giant plate of lettuce and that would probably be like 30 calories. So you have to understand that foods are different in terms of calories and a lot of plant foods tend to be quite lower in calorie density. So especially things that are more whole foods. So vegetables are a great example, are very, very low in terms of caloric density. So a lot of people might actually end up eating less than they need calorically to feel satisfied and good and function and have energy. So if you find yourself having less energy, then it might be because you're not eating enough. And this happens a lot because people just don't know what to eat when they go vegan and they don't really understand the concept of caloric density or calories in general. So if it's helpful to you, then it might be a good idea, maybe in the beginning of your journey at least, to you know see how many calories are in certain foods and just get an idea just to make sure that you're covering your bases and that you're not eating very low calories and then wondering why you're hungry because obviously if you're not eating enough calories, you're gonna be hungry. If I'm just eating a plate of zucchini noodles, I'm gonna be hungry in about 30 minutes, okay? But if I add in some other calorically dense you know, foods into the mix, not just having zucchini noodles, but let's say I added in some, I don't know, nuts and like maybe some beans or I don't know, I don't know what kind of dish I'm making right now, okay? But like if you add in some other foods that you know are a little bit more calorically dense, then you'll feel more satisfied and fuller for a longer period of time. All right, so I do wanna give a few tips on eating out as a vegan or as a plant-based eater. So this is the tricky part. Now, eating at home, I feel like, is pretty simple and easy once you figure out what you're doing, but it's tricky when you have to have somebody else make your food for you or when you are socializing, and yeah, this is the tough part. I think I have a few videos on eating out as a vegan, so I will link those down below, but firstly, my biggest tip would be to do a little bit of research beforehand just to see if you know there are some vegan options available for you. And one of the resources that I find really helpful is Happy Cow. So Happy Cow is a website. It is basically a directory for vegans and vegetarians. And it's also an app where basically you can just type up the city that you're in and see what sort of vegan and vegetarian options there are available in your city. So they'll show you the vegan restaurants, but also the restaurants that might have some great vegan options for you. And my second tip would be to carry some snacks with you, especially kind of more calorie dense snacks. So nuts and seeds are a great thing to carry. You can carry like a little trail mix. And also uh, vegan protein bars are really great just for, you know, again, just in case, just in case, because you might have a vegan option, but again, it doesn't mean that it's gonna make you feel really satisfied. I've had a lot of vegan options at restaurants, but because they don't meet my balanced meal criteria. So for example, a lot of vegan options at certain restaurants will just be like, you know, a pasta with tomato sauce. 
and vegetables, and then I will be hungry in about an hour. So carrying a little protein bar with you or nuts and seeds is a good idea because uh, it can just help you in that kind of situation. You can still have a great meal with your friends and family, but then later on, if you do get a little bit hungry, you can have a little snack. My next tip would be to try not to follow some sort of a fad diet that cuts out certain you know, foods. So for example, I know that in the beginning of this like YouTube vegan community, okay? There was a lot of emphasis on raw foods and high carb, low fat. A lot of those high carb, low fat people and raw foodists have gone away, <laughs> if you will. They are no longer part of the vegan lifestyle, okay? And I mean, again, everyone's situation is different, but I do think that if you follow some sort of a fad, trendy diet, this can backfire. So again, I'm not a nutritionist or a dietitian or a doctor. I believe that variety is very important. A variety of different foods is incredibly important. A lot of people think about vegan diets and think that it's restrictive, but if you actually think about it, there are so many different things that you could eat on a plant-based diet, and just the variety of just fruits and vegetables and grains and just plant foods in general is just massive. So take advantage and eat a variety of different foods. For me, my rule is that as long as it's vegan, I don't cut it out of my diet. I think one of the things, again, that, you know, for me was definitely not gonna work was eating like super low fat, super high carb, and super low protein. That was like the thing that was like in the beginning of this vegan community. That was like what everyone was following, this like really high carb, very low fat, very low protein diet. It really did not work for me, guys. It made me feel hungry. I would eat a giant plate of food and I would feel hungry or unsatisfied about an hour later because it was not a balanced meal. Try to eat a variety, okay? <laughs> My second last tip, you guys, is maybe don't listen to outlandish nutrition claims from non-professionals on YouTube or Instagram. You might want to consider taking what they say with a tiny grain of salt, okay? So, like I say, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a dietitian, and I really try to be careful not to give like really, you know, specific nutrition tips because I don't know much. There are certain things that I just know as like common fact. For example, B12, you should be taking as a vegan. And for example, like, you know, heavily processed foods are not very good for you. Uh, and sticking to a more whole foods plant-based diet is slightly better for your health. Like, there are some, some, you know, very general common sense sort of claims that I will make, but I try to be very careful in terms of giving any sort of real like nutrition advice because obviously I'm not a nutritionist. But a lot of people online have a lot of um, false confidence and will say a lot of things without real, you know, evidence and it can be very dangerous. So be careful who you listen to online, basically. Be careful who you listen to. Even take what I say with a grain of salt, do your own research and, you know, try to listen to people that might actually know what they're talking about to some degree, at least. Everyone has their own biases. Everyone has their own, you know, story and their own background, what they believe in. But at the end of the day, like, it is important to try not to listen to everyone online and take everything somebody says to heart. Okay? Now my last of you guys is a little bit different, but I wanted to mention this, which is, guys, you will be met with resistance to some degree, okay? So when you first go vegan or plant-based, there's gonna be people around you that are going to say things to you that you don't want to hear. There are going to be people that are not supportive. Even your loved ones, your family and friends might say things to you that hurts you or that makes you, you know, disappointed or you feel attacked and, it, it happens to almost everyone that goes vegan. Trust me, you are not alone. And one thing I wanna say is that usually, after a little bit, people calm down a little bit, okay? So they will get used to it. So it's usually an issue that happens when you first go vegan, that's when you are met with the most resistance and the most amount of like backlash, I guess, and your friends and family just like not understanding where you're coming from. Whilst they may never understand exactly where you are coming from, they will usually, ease down on the, you know, teasing and the making fun and the criticizing after a little bit. So remember that it's not forever, like it's gonna be pretty bad in the beginning, maybe, 
depending on you know who you are and who your family and friends are, but it usually does come down after a while. So hopefully that gives you some you know level of reassurance and know that it doesn't mean your family and friends are bad people. It doesn't mean that they are mean to you on purpose. They're trying to bully you. It has nothing to do with that. I think it has a lot to do with so many different factors. Uh, they might be becoming defensive because maybe they're thinking that you're attacking them by your lifestyle choices. Uh, they might be thinking that you know it's not good for your health. They might be concerned for you. And also they might be just kind of resistant to change because a lot of people are just resistant when people around them change. So it could be a variety of different factors. All right, you guys, so that's pretty much it for my video. I hope you guys enjoyed my tips. I hope you enjoyed the recipes, and I hope you got something out of this video. If you know anybody that wants to go vegan or is interested, maybe you wanna send them this video to, I don't know, give them some ideas, okay? So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. And once again, guys, don't forget to check out Care Of. You can take their five minute quiz, which is linked down below. And you can of course get 50% off your first order using this code right here. And thank you so much for watching you guys and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.